Our God is stronger. Our God is bigger. Bigger than our problems. Bigger than any challenge that we will ever face in life. Good morning. How are you? We are grateful for your commitment to Holy Church of Grace. Your love for God and love for people. Today, we're going to learn from the Word of God biblical principles that can help us understand how to live a life without crying. As you know, before we, we teach, we encourage you to repeat these words with us. I can do great things because Jesus is with me. He promised to never leave me. I love God and I love people because the Holy Spirit lives in my heart. He is greater than Satan. My life is safe because God's my Father is watching over me. He is in control of everything. I'm walking toward glorification to see my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The message for today is simple. It is a profound message because that's what God wants for you. You may say, what is the message? God tells you this morning to stop crying. Stop crying. When facing tough time in life, you can either be strong or weak. There is a woman in the Bible called Anna. He faced a difficult situation. She could not have a child. For a period of time, she started crying until she realized she could no longer live a life of crying. She decided to bring her problems to God. And God blessed her with a wonderful child called Samuel. And this morning, God asked Samuel a question in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his son to be king. Samuel was a special child. Because his mother prayed for him. He was a special child because he learned how to serve God under the leadership of Eli. He ministered before the Lord under Eli. Samuel witnessed from what God did for his mother the power of God. He understood how God worked. He learned from his mother how to be a respectful leader. 
He learned from his parents how to love God and love people. Samuel lived his life hoping that the values he learned from his parents, leadership of Eli, the high priest, and from God himself, he was hoping that he will transfer those values to King Saul, and Saul will transfer them to the next generation. But his dream didn't come to reality. God rejected Saul. As a result, Samuel fell into depression. When I look at this passage, I look at it from a mental health perspective. That's what I do as a mental health counselor. God saw a depressive Samuel. Uh, depression has symptoms. Uh, some of the symptoms of depression is crying for a very long period of time. And Samuel was crying because God rejected Saul. And God said, for how long will you mourn over Saul? For Saul. For how long will you mourn for Saul? What God is saying to Samuel, when you have a loss in your life, something or someone that you value is no longer in your life. It's okay to cry, but you cannot live a lifestyle of crying. Crying is supposed to be for a season. There is a season to cry in life, but you cannot make your life a life of crying. God asks you today, for how long Will you cry for the death of innocent people who clearly indicated how they feel emotionally, psychologically? I cannot breathe. I want to live, but yet I die. We cry. But the question this morning, for how long will we cry over abuse, social injustice? For how long will we cry for people, for some people who do not believe other people are worthy of honor, or worthy of dignity? For how long? Will we cry of a sexual abuse, human trafficking? For how long will we cry for our children that drug are destroying? For how long will we cry? That's the question God is asking us today. And I believe I know the answer. I know when you need to stop crying. God told Samuel, you need to stop crying for someone that I rejected. We're going to stop crying when we reject what God rejects. What did God reject? God rejected a leadership that did not honor him. Saul started well. He started in humility. He did not believe that he was worthy to become the king of God's people. But along the way, I don't know if he was because of privileges, of his positions, of his power, his heart has changed. He became arrogant. He did not follow God's instructions. As a result, God rejected him. And that caused a lot of pain to Samuel. And Samuel cried for a long period of time. He even had suicidal ideation. He was afraid that Saul will kill him one day when God asked him to go anoint David. 
to become king in place of Saul. You're going to stop crying when you reject what God rejects. God rejected Saul, but it was difficult for Samuel to let go of Saul. Here's what we need to learn also. When God removes someone or something from your life, know that he has something better in place for you. God rejected Saul to give Samuel David. And we're going to see from the word of God some qualities, skill that David had, Saul, Samuel needed. I'm telling you, God is telling you today to stop crying for someone who left you. Stop crying means don't cry for the rest of your life. You can cry for one day. You can cry for two days. But you cannot spend your entire week crying. Regardless of what happened to you. God is telling you today, stop crying. It seems like if you look at the history of this family, you see Anna, the mother of Samuel, Cry a lot when she realized she could not have a child. But she came to the realization that crying will not give her a child. She said, I need to stop crying and talk to God about my problems. And God solved her problem to give her a blessed child called Samuel. So this morning, God is telling you, if I reject something, you can cry. But the question for how long? will you cry if i reject someone in your life you can cry but for how long you're gonna cry if i let if i ask your supervisor to let you go for how long you're gonna cry if allowed out sickness to come into your life you can cry but for how long you will cry what god is telling you you and i this morning if we want to stop crying we have to reject what god rejects. If we're going to stop crying, we have to accept a new leadership. For how long people will suffer in this country? For how long people will look at us and tell us we are not people? We are a thing. We're not worthy of praise. For how long we're going to live in a society with injustice? For how long we're going to live in a society where some people think that they are entitled to certain things and other people have no right to eat, no right to become what they want to become in life. For how long we're going to treat people with malice and justice? We're all crying for a society where everybody has equal resources with equal opportunities to succeed. Wealth, if not for some people, is for all people. Why? Because wealth comes from God. Power is not for some people, it's for all people. And we have been crying because some people believe we do not deserve to be in position of power, in position of authority. We have been crying because people are oppressing us, keeping us from moving to the next level. The question God is asking us today, for how long will we cry? We're going to stop crying when we change the leadership. God rejected the leadership of Saul to bring into the life of the Israelites a leader after his own heart. We need the right leadership in our homes, the right leadership in our educational system, the right leadership in a scientific uh, uh, domain. We need the right leadership in, in 
everywhere in our country if we are going to be successfully live as people of dignity and honor. So the more we cry, the more the problems gonna be there. We need to ask ourselves questions such as, what can I do to change this situation? We need new leadership. We need new leadership in our churches, in our homes, in our community. We need leadership that honor God. Because when leaders honor God, they treat people with dignity. When leaders honor God, they love their people. They don't use power for their own good. They use power for the good of everyone. They don't go in power poor and become wealthy and don't do anything for the people who elected them. They don't give promises to the people all their lives, but they provide provision for the people to live as human beings should live. For how long will we cry, I cannot breathe? For how long? God said, today is the day to stop crying because when I reject a leadership, you also need to reject that leadership. What kind of leadership do we need in today's society where people can be treated with honor and dignity, where all lives matter? What kind of leadership do we need? May I propose to you these qualities that I saw in David, a leader that God chose after his own heart. If you look at verse 18 in 1 Samuel chapter 16, here's what you're going to see. Let me look at it for you. God says, Samuel, the old leadership is gone. Now we need a new leadership. A leadership that will provide justice for all. I want to bless you with a leader. Interestingly, when we live a life where we are crying for issues that are taking place in our lives and the lives of other people, we may fail to become a source of blessing for, the, for someone who's waiting for us to go to the next level. Samuel was supposed to be the reason why David became king. But if he spent the rest of his life crying, David would have never been able to become king. So God said, you need to stop crying because I want to use your life to be a blessing to other people. I want you to get up, take your oil, go to Bethlehem, and replace the leadership that you have been crying for. I want you to replace Saul with David. What kind of leadership do we need in our homes today? What kind of leadership do we need in our school system? What kind of leadership do we need in our world today? The leadership that we need we need leaders who worship God, not money. Because the love of power, the love of money is the root of all evil. We need leaders who worship God. David was a leader who worshiped God. In verse 18, somebody said to Saul, I have seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the lyre. He was a musician, a worshiper of God, I know elections are coming. Be extremely careful whom you put in power because the people that you put in power, if they love money, power more than they love you, you're going to be here. Live a life of misery. Make sure we have the right leadership at the right time to do the right thing. 
So God said, I rejected the leadership of Saul to give you a better leadership. Someone after my own heart. Someone who will obey me. Someone who will worship me. Someone who will not allow his power, privileges, positions, prevent him from worshiping me. And today, what do people do in today's society? Some people worship political parties, but they do not worship God. Some leaders are faithful to what the parties want them to do. Even if what the parties want them to do is wrong, they remain faithful to the parties. But they are not faithful to God who created humanity to live with dignity and justice for all. So what does God want? God wants leaders who acknowledge him as the creator. Leaders who do not worship creation, but worship the creators. David was a worshiper of God. God said, I rejected Saul to choose a leadership that will worship me. Second, in verse 18, we learn that David is a brave man and a warrior. What God is saying, God said, Samuel, you are crying for Saul, but I rejected Saul because Saul could not face Goliath. I'm going to bless you with a leadership that is brave, a leadership that is has a warrior mentality, a leadership that does not create problems for people, but a leadership that provides solution for the problems of the people. Choose leaders that will not add to your problems. Choose leaders that will not create social injustice. Choose leaders, don't choose leaders that will not take privileges away from some people to give to other people. Choose leaders that will look at humanity and say, you know what, we are equally important in the eyes of God. Therefore, we all deserve to be treated with honor and dignity. We all should be inspired to become whatever we want to become. No human being should tell you, you cannot succeed. But there is a system around the world that is established long time ago to privilege some people and leave the majority in poverty. That needs to stop. We cannot live our lives crying over oppression. We need to change the leadership. A leadership that includes problem solvers. People who know how to identify problems. People who know how to identify problems, define the problems, and brainstorm on solutions so that we can create better communities. We can give children opportunities to become doctors, to become whatever they want to become in life. We need to create a society where justice is for all, not for some. And we cannot do that until we have the right leadership in every place in our country. And every place around the world, and God say, the leadership that I want, I want a leadership that provides solution to the problems of humanity, not a leadership that creates problems for other people. And God say, I want. David speaks well. Basically what God is saying, God understands that when leaders speak, their words matter. When leaders speak, their words matter. When leaders speak, their words matter. Because people are listening to what leaders are saying. The Bible says the power of life and death is in the words we speak. Leaders need to speak words of love. Words that promote 
life. Words that promote justice for all. Words that give people hope. Words that build up people, not words that destroy people. We need leaders that know how to speak like David. We also need leaders that are good looking. They are good looking physically. They are good looking psychologically. They are good looking in every aspect of the world. They have to be good looking. Good looking people look for the good of others. And then we need leaders that God is with them. The Lord is with him. So what God is saying to Samuel, you, keep, you need to stop crying because I rejected Saul to give you some. I am with David. What God is telling you this morning, when I, when I take away something from you, I'm going to give you something better. We need new leadership. We need new people. We're going to find those new people. We're going to find the new leadership when we reject what God rejects. God is telling you this morning, for how long you are going to cry for what's taking place in your life? For how long will you mourn for what's taking place in your country? For how long will you mourn for what's taking place around the world where the majority cannot eat, where the majority does not have a way of becoming successful like the minority. For how long will you cry? God is telling you this morning, stop crying. Establish a new leadership. A leadership that worships God. A leadership that solves problems. A leadership that, that are respectful of other people. A leadership that uses their words wisely. A leadership God is with. I don't know for how long you have been crying. But God wants me to tell you this morning to stop crying. You need to stop crying. Why? Because you are the very person he wants to use to bring the change that you so desire. Become a worshiper of God, not a worshiper of the things that God created. Make sure you are a problem solver. Don't enter into people's life to create problems for them, but come into my life and I will come into your life so together we can solve problems. The time has come right now for all races, whatever the color of your skin is, to get together, to solve problems, not to create problems for other people. We need to stop making other people cry because of our bad behaviors bad choices but we need to live a life where we can help people to stop crying we need leaders that god approves i'm striving to be that type of leader god wants you to be the leader that he wants you to be after his own heart may the lord bless you may the lord encourage you for how long Will you mourn for what's taking place in your life or what's taking place around the world? God rejects Saul. God rejects that person. God let go of that job. God let go of that something that you so value to give you something better. Be the leader God wants you to be so you can stop crying and do something about what's taking place around the world. Bless you. We love you.